guys, Justin Bagimo, founder and president of Axie Property Management Group. Today it's uh, the end of April, we have seven days left in the month, and the latest job unemployment claims, the number has been released, it came in at 4.4 million. So, so far, since this thing started in March, we're at 26 million unemployment claims. Since 2008, since the Great Recession, we added 22 million jobs. So we've already erased all the job gains and growth that we had since the last uh, Great Recession, 2007, 2008, 2009. And it played out for years. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of people aren't quite understanding is that this isn't a, hey, May 1st is gonna come around and maybe my state's gonna lift the order so I can actually go out and do stuff again. This is gonna be a long process. Like this is gonna be years of bad economic activity, bad news, financial hardship, we are heading into that cycle. And um, the truth is nothing can be ruled out. You know, nothing can be ruled out. We're seeing unprecedented bailouts left and right. Um, just today there was news that the House is passing $310 billion for the Paycheck Protection Plan to keep small businesses um, in business paying their employees. And you just have to know that this thing is ripe with fraud, with abuse, with people getting the money that maybe shouldn't get the money in. And I'm not trying to play the advocate of who's doing what, but the truth is when you throw that much money at something, people are going to grab it. And we're already hearing, I think that there's a lawsuit with Wells Fargo that instead of processing the applications in the order that they were received, big shocker here, Wells Fargo, they actually processed them in the most profitable way for them to receive the biggest kickback in the commission for originating those loans. So, you know, throwing money in big government at, at problems, it doesn't solve the problem. It makes it worse. You know, there's unintended consequences for everything that they do, that we do. And we are throwing half trillion dollars here, half trillion dollars there. That's money that has a fuse. That money doesn't just stop. Like it has power that goes intrinsically beyond where it's going. And I guess to put this in a better way, like, uh, let's look at it this way. Okay, so a couple days ago, the oil futures, which is basically trading um, oil ahead of the actual physical product, was at negative $40. Negative $40. So a barrel of oil costs you money to give it away. So that's interesting, right? So with this oil going on, with oil being where it was at negative 40 for the futures. I don't know where it is today. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that these oil drillers and oil men and oil industry, the whole industry, they're not pumping oil anymore. They have to shut it down. They have to shut it down because they're losing money. And every time you pump that oil, you're paying a royalty for the land and then the oil, you have all the costs. So they're selling it at a loss. It doesn't make sense. You shut it down. The other problem we're having is there's so much oil. There are super tankers just floating around the world holding oil because there's nowhere else for it to go. All the caverns and caves and storage containers and facilities, like they're all filled up with oil. Think about gasoline. We're not using as much. You don't go to the store as much. You don't go out as much. You don't, we don't commute. We don't go on vacations. Um, airplanes aren't flying the skies. Cruise ships aren't sailing around the world. You know, like it's not being used. So there's me parts of the country and the world that get hit really hard. The first one's coming to my, my mind is Texas. I used to live there. There's a lot of great people there. I think Texas can be hit really hard with this. I think uh, this will be felt for years. And I think you're going to see real estate prices going one direction. You know, for the next couple of years, I think there's only one, one way that real estate prices are going to go. And I think they're going to go down. I mean, you've got 26 million people that filed for unemployment. Maybe they're gaming the system. Maybe they're gaming, gaming the system because they're getting, you know, the, the full unemployment benefits plus a $600 kicker. So now they're making more money not working unemployed than they would have if they had to go out, go to their place of business, go to their place of work, and work eight hour a day. It doesn't make sense anymore. So now we're disincentivizing people to want to go out to work. And when the orders are lifted, and then here in the state of Michigan, and our governor's already talking about extending the stay at home again. So when the orders are finally lifted, which is gonna be gradual and slow everywhere apparently, who the hell's gonna wanna go out? Who's gonna feel safe to go get a haircut, to go to the bar, to a restaurant, or to go listen to live music, or go to a concert, or go to a sporting game? Nobody, nobody. I mean, we've turned into society like where we're guessing or we're looking at everybody 
incredulously, like, you did something wrong. Oh my God, you're out in public without a face mask. How dare you? Now, now we've turned into the self-policing society where they're not doing that, you know, and, and that's a real concern. I'm not going off the left side, off the dark, I'm not putting on a tinfoil hat, but, you know, there are unattended consequences. And when we start this economy back up, it's not just like flipping a switch. The supply chains are breaking down. The way that products were delivered, the way that goods were delivered, how they were moved and transported through the country. Only critical items are flowing right now. So all those other supply chains are either sitting idly with workers unemployed, but how long does that go on for? So you give a small business two and a half months of payroll to pay their employees, but honestly, in two and a half months, then what? You do it again? So here's where the problem kind of lies. The reason that the government, I believe, keeps, you know, with all these stimulus funds, they're trying to stop a panic, right? Our economy is built on confidence, consumer confidence, what you feel, how you feel about your wealth, how you feel about your employment, how you feel about your, your you know, financial security and your health, and all these things, right? That's all part of it. So, we keep printing money, creating money out of nothing. Trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars that are getting created. And our debt's going up. There's a bigger thing that's happening here, and that it's not just that we can just print money forever. Here's, I think, two possible scenarios of what I see or where I think this could happen. I think at some point, you have to stop bailing everybody out. At some point, you have to let capitalism, and I mean real capitalism, bankruptcies, letting things fail. Failure is a reality of humanity. We do fail. Things do fail. Not everything needs to be bailed out and survived. There's probably a lot of businesses that need to fail. I mean, right now, we have one of the highest number of realtors in the West Michigan market ever. I think it, I think it is the highest ever. That's going to change. It's going to change. So we're still living in the old thought of what things were instead of looking to the future of where things are going. This would be a really rough transition. The other option is that the government just keeps printing money and they print the U.S. dollar into oblivion. <laughs> there's a really good chance they might do that. I mean, there's nothing off the table. Nothing could be ruled out where this could go. Nothing like this has ever happened. And so now you have governments around the world, trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of yen and euro and well, you name it, whatever, it's all fiat currency. Everybody's doing this, it's not just the United States. So we are really you know, living in interesting times for sure, for sure. So here's, here's a thought, is that our economy is based on confidence. And it doesn't take the smartest person around to understand that confidence is in you know, the dumps. People don't want to go out, people are scared. That's going to have a chain reaction. So we're a month, month and a half, two months into this COVID thing. The amount of bankruptcies that are going to be coming down the pipeline, think about retailers. I just saw the Gap, you know, Macy's, everybody, everybody's in trouble. J.C. Penn, all of them, they're all in trouble. I mean, who's going to want to go back to a mall? I hated the malls before, and I definitely don't need to go back for any reason. I'd rather order it online. The future is changing of what, of how we transact, how we do things. And you can already see that. That's happening today. That's adapting. But think about all the people that were employed in those businesses. You know, just because you go through bankruptcy doesn't mean you survive. Your company might be chopped up and sold off, you know, fire sale to get any last little bit of value out of it. I, I don't know. But the reality is all those tenants all of our tenants, all of your tenants, you know, they have jobs, they have income. They did have jobs and they did have income. And I think you can see where this is going. So my firm belief, I'm gonna say this again, it's a broken record, conserve cash, cut all non-essential expenses. Even though the dollar is getting trashed right now, in the short term, it's what you want to amass. Because on the backside of this, prices are, things are gonna get so bad, I think you're gonna see prices deeply, 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 deeply discounted. Goldman Sachs came out with their analysts saying that they expect this financial crisis to be four times more severe than the 2008-2009 crisis that happened. 
four times more severe. Now, if you lived through that like I did, you remember what that looked like. It was ugly. It was real ugly. And I think we're looking at something really ugly again. I'm not saying that to be a doomser. You know, I don't want to be negative. That's not it. But that's just the reality. It's just the reality of the situation that nothing can be ruled out. That's why it's important to be prudent, to be conservative in your approach, you know, cut back on things you don't need, which I'm sure everybody kind of has more or less because there's really not a whole lot to do when you're locked into your homes, which is a whole nother story. So I just want to shoot this out there. Um, it's interesting times. It is interesting times. You know, reading through the news, you can get a sense of things. You can just get a sense of the despair and at least the direction. I mean, to think, like the stock market's going back to 23, 24,000, the Dow, Dow Jones. But to think that we're going back to what things were in January, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So the new reality, nobody knows quite what it looks like yet, but it's coming. And so it's the time to keep learning, keep uh, staying up, keep current, keep investing yourself, your mind. This is the greatest asset we all have right here, our relationships. Um, it's important to start thinking about the future and what that could look like and where the opportunities could be. And we're doing the same thing ourselves. We're, we want to be in a position on the back side of this thing to get in there and start investing heavily to help bring economies back up. Well, nothing happens until people spend money. That's the truth with our economy. It takes movement, velocity of money. There ain't a whole lot of velocity except for debt right now. There's a whole lot of debt being created. So it's not all bad news. It's just it is what it is. So uh, we'll stay tuned. We'll keep you updated on more unemployment job, job losses and uh, the future of the dollar. It'll be one hell of a bumpy ride. For now, Justin Badman signing off. Take care and be safe.